prior to IronCAD, <coughs> excuse me, if we wanted to create a part, we would do something like this. We would have to create a sketch. And if I go in and, and edit that sketch, you'll see what I mean. So I would have to create this sketch, spend the time, lock the corners down so that when I change the dimension, it moved in the right direction, uh, dimension everything in the right place. And then when I was finished, I would extrude it. And we'll just show you how that's done. I'm going to create a standalone part. And there's the profile. I'm going to extrude it to one inch. And there's my part. Now, the downside to doing that is everything is locked to the sketch. If I want to change things, I've got to edit the sketch. Now, and that was great when that's all there was. And we were moving from the 2D world. That's, that was familiar to us. But as you move into the 3D world, if you really want to get speed out of it, you need to model differently uh, than we used to. And what I found was IronCAD actually models the way I think. For instance, <clears throat> if I wanted to create this same part over again, <clears throat> I would figure, let me just take a block with the left mouse, drag it and drop it on the screen. And if you notice over on the right, left side, the part number two is highlighted. If I click on it again, you'll see that the block that was used to create that, the shape that was used to create that block is now highlighted. And what you're seeing are the handles. So you can actually reshape that block in any direction you want or do a right click on it and edit the size box. So I'm going to make that eight by six by one and now I've got another shape that I can work with. Well, I want to I, I want to cut these corners out just like we did on the other. Now, again, if if you think about it, when it, when you look at that, you say, well, what I want is I want to cut out. So I go to my catalog, just grab a the opposite of a block, which is a square hole, drag it, drop it on the corner, and now I've got a cutout. Okay, but you want you want to make that accurate. So what I do is I can grab this handle, touch it against the side, and now it's even with that side. Do the same with the other. So now I've got the outer edges of that whole block, uh, coplanar, if you will, with the outside edges. So now I want to create the actual size. So if I click on the handle in the direction that I want it to go, I can type 1.5 in that direction and I want it to go one unit in that direction. So now that's the way I think. I want to cut out, I just drop it and it's right there. Now <clears throat> I, I could continue that and just keep dropping things and then and then changing changing the uh, the handles but I want to make this a little bit smarter than than just dropping individual handles. I, you know the way the, the older part was done everything is individual so that if you want to change one thing it only changes that one uh, that one part so I want to get rid of those and I'm going to highlight that one square hole piece again and I, now I'm going to introduce you to the tri ball this is the tri ball the it has multiple uh, handles on it and the, the way this works is you've got the outside handles if you want to move it in in a linear direction using using the handles and you can type in the direction you want to go you can also if you notice the little hand with the rotation I can actually rotate that part inside the, the tri ball now what I want to want to do now I'm going to do two things the outside handles are more directional uh, in the Z direction the X direction the Y direction the inside handles are more for orientation. So if I right click on the inside handles, you'll see that I can actually make those inside handles perpendicular to edges and perpendicular to faces. I can move them to center points and I can actually interact with another part that is part of an assembly, which is something other programs don't do. If you're working on a particular part, you can't actually sometimes reference other pieces of the assembly, which I can do with the tri ball. Now, if I wanted to move this little square hole, I want to move it in a direction from a, from a known point. That's the big thing about the modeling. 
uh, is you, you want to put things and you always want to start from a known location. So many times you need to move the tri ball within the, uh, the shape itself. And the way you do that is you, you hit the space bar and I've now unlocked this, unlocked the tri ball so I can now move it and I want to move it to a point and I want to move it to a point on that edge. So now I hit the space bar again. Now I can actually do a right click on the inner handle. And I say I want to mirror it, but I actually want to mirror it with a link. So now I've got two two cutouts that are identical, but yet they're also controlled. Uh, they, they change with each other. So now I've got two holes. Well, I, I want two more on the other side. So I highlight one, use my shift key, highlight the other, and then turn on my tri ball. And now the tri ball will actually work on both of those uh, uh, features. But now I need to move it so that I can mirror it uh, on the other side. Hit my space bar again. Go to the inside dot. Now I want to mirror it between a face and a point. So I pick that. I, here's my face. And then here's my point. So it now moves it. So I don't even have to know distances or, or what dimensions work. I just have to pick things. And again, it's working the way my, my mind tends to think. So I lock the tri ball back in place again, click on the inner circle, or the inner dot. Now I want to mirror it again, but I want them to be linked. So now I've got four cutouts, but they're all linked together. So if I were to change one, they're all going to change. So again, that's saving a lot of time. Now, in, in if, <clears throat> if you remember the old the, the old profile, I had to sketch those holes. Now, with, with the IronCAD, I'm going to just drop them. But the first thing I want to do is I want to blend some of these corners. And this blending technique is pretty much like, like all the others. So there's nothing really spectacular here other than it, it blends. And I'm going to create a 0.75 blend. And I want to pick, the reason I picked wireframe was so I could actually see through the part. There, there are other ways of doing this, but I, I just kind of like going into the wireframe. It's just, it's just easy for me because I can remember to do that. Let's do another one, and we're going to change the outside curves. There are ways, if you like working in shaded view, there are ways of hitting certain special keys where you can actually grab right through the part. Um, but I always forget what the keys are. So, but I know what wireframe, and I know wireframe is there, so I just go right to wireframe. Now, I want to put a hole. Well, where do I want to put a hole? I just go get my hole, which is the opposite of a cylinder. I get my hole cylinder, drag it, and drop it right on that dot, and change that to 0.5. Now, if I'm not concerned about this, you know, th those being linked, I could just continue dropping. dropping holes where I want them. I want to show you how I link them together in another uh, example coming up. But there are my holes and my hole for the center. Again, I don't have to worry about finding the center. I just drag, drop, and it illuminates. And then there's my center. So now I've, I've created that part using shapes and then have to worry about a profile. However, if I do want to build something that is not quite, uh, I don't have a shape that fits it, I can still do that. So let me drop another block down here, click on it again, go edit the size, I highlight that part what you also notice, I don't know if you if you're familiar with other systems, is I actually have multiple parts in the same scene. In some of the other programs, you can't do that. Um, you've got to create the part, save it, create another part, and save it. And if you wanted to build an assembly, you have to open an assembly file and then insert these parts into the assembly. With IronCAD, I don't have to do that. So what I'm going to do now is, if you notice. It's got a cyan color. That's that's in that's in the the, uh, the shape mode. But if I click on it again, 
it goes into the block mode. Well, that block is actually made up of a cross section. So I can actually go in and edit the cross section. So the, the, the profile, if you will, or the cross section is still there, but the shapes have been done to save you the, the steps of having to go in, in and modify or actually create uh, profile. So here I'm going to do an ellipse, connect it there, at the top, and then the sides. So now I'm done with my ellipse. I'm going to create the polyline there. I want to click from here, do a right click, enter. So now that's down one unit. Now it's if you notice, it is it is uh, horizontal, so I'm just going to click it there. Now, without doing knowing anything, I just want to mirror this so everything is symmetrical. So I'm going to pick the line that I want to mirror. And you see that the line is selected here, and all I have to do now is to check the axis that I want to mirror the that line about, and it brings it down to the bottom. So once I'm finished with that, I now have some lines that I need to get cleaned up a little bit. So I go to my trim command and I start removing the lines that I don't want. And there were actually two lines there. You do need to remember you need a closed profile to, cr to create any kind of an extrusion. So that's my new profile. So I didn't have a shape that actually fit that. So, so sometimes you will have to go in and you will have to make modifications to the profile. And when you're finished, I now have the profile that I'm working with. And again, going back to my blend command, it's still a half inch. Let me switch back to my wireframe. It like anything else there is always more ways more than one way to complete a part <clears throat> now if you notice earlier I dropped individual holes well in this case I'm going to drop an individual hole but now I want those holes to be linked together so that if I do change the diameter of the hole I want them all to change so it's going to save me some time so let me turn my tri-ball on because the tri-ball again allows me to make copies of that hole. Go into the center point, tell it I want to make copies, I want to make linked copies. So now what I do is I just, with my left mouse, get that, drag it, snap to where that hole I want to be. I hit P for place, drag it to the other edge, hit P for place, P for place, hit enter, and now I'm finished. Now all those holes are linked together. And that, and that again saves some time. But this I need still need the center hole, so let me drop a hole there. And now I've created a little different type part by by modifying the profile. <clears throat> but but because I, I link these holes together, I can actually come over to my tools catalog, go to my fasteners, and in the tools catalog you, you've got cold steel, you got hot form steel, you can extrude, you have gears and helixes and even bearings that you can just specify and it creates the bearing already for you. But in this case I'm just going to left mouse, drag it, highlight the hole and let it go. <clears throat> what it's doing now is it's calculating the size of that hole so it knows you know, there we go that's go to meetings giving us that trouble <clears throat> notice the nominal size it picked up was 0.5 um, it the default was for four inches I don't really want it to be four inches I'm going to make that uh, two and a half inches and I'm going to add a nut on the end of it but while we're here let me show you what we've got You've got different types of bolts. You've got different types of bolt heads, um, parameters. You can heavy, different types of material, brass, copper, aluminum, nylon, uh, how many threads per inch that you might want. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
or if you're going to use screws, you can jump over to the screws menu, different uh, types of uh, screw heads, uh, shoulders and whatnot, uh, many different types of nuts. So you can be, depending on what kind of nut you might want on it. The same with washers, you'll have different options for washers. Uh, if you're doing some kind of a cotter pin, you can got that. Or if you're using any kind of locking rings, you can, you, you've got that. And if, if any kind of size you want, all the standards are there for you. So let me get back to my bolts, double check everything that I did. Uh, two and a half, uh, 12 per inch, add a nut, and I'm just going to say uh, OK. Now, the, it knows that those, that those were linked uh, holes, so it's automatically going to populate the other linked holes. Now, I left a little room there because I want to do something with the tri ball. I want to take this part, turn the tri ball on, and I want to move this part, like we talked about earlier, without any constraints. Now, I want to move the top of this hole to the bottom of the other hole. So I want to unlock the tri ball, tell it I want to go to a center point, highlight that, and then lock it back in place. Now that it's locked, I can move the whole part by again right clicking on it, picking center point, coming over to here, flip that over, and tell it I want to move it to the center point right there. Now it moved that part with no constraints whatsoever. So you can build assemblies without constraints. The only time I need constraints is if I want to make the assembly move and articulate in some way. Now, here's something I did both the old way and the new way. Someone come from the engineering department comes in and says, hey guys, uh, this is great, but we're going to have to put an O-ring in, in, this, uh, in this part because we want to be sealed a little better. So I come back to my shapes and I go and I get a torus. And I go for the negative torus because I want the, I want the O-ring slot to be there. So I left mouse, drag that, drop it right there. So there's my O-ring, 0.125, and want it to be 0.125 tall. Turn my tri ball on, highlight the axis I want to move it, come down here, and I want to move here. I want to move that 0.25. So I've actually now created a, a groove and I'll highlight that groove with the smart paint. What I just did was I just clicked a few times till, till I got to the face level of that particular feature. So now I've actually added a groove for an O-ring in a matter of seconds. I, I actually did it both ways. In the old way that I would have had to do it uh, in other systems, is I would have had to make a work plane that, that bisects this top, excuse me, the top part vertically. And then I would have had to find the center of this hole and put a axis there for spinning. I would have then had to put construction lines so I could locate a circle at the location I wanted this groove to be. I had to make sure the groove went in as far as I needed it to be. Then I would have had to sweep that, um, that circle with a remove uh, feature to get that part. And I actually did this two ways. And you saw how fast it was with me here. When I timed myself the other day, it took me 24 seconds to create that groove. In the other method, it took me 4 minutes and 40 seconds to create the same groove. And I actually practiced it a few times so I wasn't fumbling, so I wouldn't be biased in one way or the other. Now, when you think about it, 4 minutes and 40 seconds, roughly five, almost 5 minutes versus 24, 25 seconds, that just shows you how much faster I'm getting when I start adding up those little pieces, one on top of the other, all of a sudden I'm, I'm adding or I'm, I'm shaving off hours to my assembly times. And it's all about those little little bitty savings and how you know something takes you takes you one or two seconds to do here. It may take you a minute in the old way. That adds up. Now, what about assemblies? You might ask. Well, let me let me throw in here. Uh, let's see here. Throw up an empty scene. <clears throat> so right now I've got one scene and I want to build an assembly. So I drop a block, click on the block, 
edit the size block. We'll, we'll do the same size. So now I've got a block. I, I turn my ISO off. I don't like working with ISO on. So I, what I want to do here is I want to create basically a wheel, uh, kind of like a pulley wheel. And uh, I want another block to be on top of this. Now, I would have had to create work planes and sketches to do all of that, but, but you're getting to see it's working like I'm thinking. I want to put a block there. I drag and put a block there. Well, I want that block to, to go across the entire width of the first block. So I just grab that handle, touch the side, and now it's, it's coplanar. Do the same with the other. Just touch the edge. So now I know that's coplanar. Take the back one, touch on that. Now I know that it, it's, it's connected all the way around. But it's not the right size yet. So I click on it again, grab the handle, now, the distance is going to move from that handle. So I want that to be, oh, come on back here. I want that to be one unit. And I also want it to be one unit, one inch, if you will, from the top of that. Now, I want to put a shaft through here. So I, I want to get a little bit fancier. So let me go back to my features, go to my blends. Okay, so it's still set to a half. So I, I Blend that end, blend that end, until I'm finished. So now I've got something I could put a shaft through. Uh, but what I also want to do is I want to make an opening for my wheel. So I go back to my H block, drag it and drop it on that dot. Now that's, I know it's the center. And here again, I'm not taking any measurements. I don't have to worry about measurements because everything is already on screen for me. Now what I do is I highlight one handle with my control key, pick the other handle, and now I can move that symmetrically in any direction I, I want it to go. It's kind of like a Windows thing. If, if you grab, use the control key, you can grab two handles. So I want to set that to be 1.5, and I want that to go all the way to this end here. So now it goes there, and I want it to go all the way to, to the surface here. So now I know it's 8 inches, so it's going the full length of that so now I want it to be six inches, so it goes six inches from that end. But I also want it to cut up so we can put the wheel in. So I'm just going to take this handle, move it up, so now I've cut a hole, a square hole, <clears throat> exactly where I want it to be. But I need to put a shaft. Well, before I put a shaft, let me come under here and put a, a mounting plate. Again, drop the block. And let's let's reshape the block so it fits. Go to there, to that edge, to that edge, and let me make that one. And I want to make that uh, four, so it comes down to four. So now I've got something I could put a block on and mount a block onto it. But let me put a hole for my shaft. So I grab the cylinder, again drop it right in the center. I don't have to measure anything because that's where the the center is. Indicate that that's 0.5 and just go all the way to the other end. So now I've got a hole that goes all the way through. Again, just that fast. I'd be still working on some of these other pieces in another system if I, if I were using that. But again, I just wanted a hole, grabbed the hole, dropped it, put the shape of the hole I want. Now I need I need some mounting holes, so I've got a slot here. So let me give it. Let me drop a slot, again right in the center. So I it, it to me it's a known location. Let me drag that all the way through so it goes through the part. But it's it's in the wrong direction. Turn the tri ball on. Lock down the axis that I want to rotate the slot about. With my left mouse, just drag down, let it go. But I want to move that. 90 degrees. So okay, so now it's moved 90 degrees, but it's not where I want it to be. Let me lock lock this down, drag this over, and let it go. And I want to move it here, and I want to move that 1.5 inches. So now I've got that. So now we can see that I've got a hole that goes all the way through. But I'm going to need two holes. Highlight that. Turn the tri ball on. Unlock the tri ball again. Take this and move it to a point right down here. 
So I know that point is is the center point between both edges. Turn my tribal, uh, lock my tribal back in again, and I want to link the mirrored copy. So now I've got two holes. They're linked together, but maybe maybe they're a little bit too high. So come back here, click on one, hold my shift key down, click on the other. So now when I turn my tri ball on, it's going to perform the operation on both features. Again, lock in my, my axis of movement, grab it, let it go, and move it here, and move it here, 0.5. So now I move them both kind of where I wanted them to be. All right, so that's, that's good. So that's, the one, that's one of my parts. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I want to make <clears throat> the axle that this can can rotate around. So I drag another part. You also notice on the screen that I've got two parts, part one and part two. If I had more time and I wasn't talking to you guys right now, I would label these axle and base or whatever. And so I want to make this 0.5. And I'm not too concerned about its length right now, but I may want to change its color just to differentiate it. From, from the other work. So now let me highlight that again. It's not at the right angle for me, so I want to rotate it. I highlight the angle part, type 90. So now it's it's at it's facing the right direction. Get my tri ball back on again, go into the center dot, and I tell I want to move that to the center point of that hole. So now I know its placement and its placed correctly, but again, no constraints were made. So if you notice on the side of the screen here, there are no constraints. So now I just highlight this, take this edge, touch it to there, take this edge, touch it to the surface there. So now I've got my part number two. So now I need a wheel. So let me go back to my shapes, drag another cylinder, drag it out here, and this one I'm going to make eight inches by one inch and again you know I want to make sure that I can differentiate it from the color of the others so I just I hit it with that highlight the part highlight the uh, tri ball turn it on lock down the axis I want of my rotation left mouse so now I've got it, it it's sort of a wheel but it's a solid wheel. That's not what I want. I want it to make it a little lighter. So I come down here and I, I want to put some, some, some slice openings in it, kind of like a pie. But, but I want to make a whole pie. So I drag that, drop it into the center. And so now I've got something that resembles a pie, but it doesn't go all the way through. Highlight that. Drag this out. So now I go all the way through. But it doesn't have does it didn't leave me any room to put an axle through there so what I do is come over here highlight this right click actually come over here I want to edit the cross section first I'll come back to the right click there so edit the cross section oh, wrong part there we go Part number three. There we go. So I want to give myself a little bit room, a little room to make a hole. There we go. Drag this out. Step it to that. Finish that. So now I've got room to put a hole. So I can then come over here. Got a cylinder. Drop it make a 0.5 so I'm beginning a wheel but I, I you know it's not kind of what I've finished yet so let me highlight that that's that slice turn my tri ball on lock down my center axis do a right click and drag and let it go it allows me to create a radial pattern well in this case I want four of them and I want them spaced 90 degrees apart so now I've got a wheel, but I want them to go a little closer to the edge. So I hit F7 key and make that perpendicular to the screen. Go back to my uh, 
my pattern. Let me get to my pattern. There it is. And we want to make it a little bit bigger. So okay, so good. So we got it there. Now I want to put the put the wheel in the in the center of that. But before I do that, if I look at the wheel, it's got a flat surface on it. So if I put some kind of a rope or a belt over that, it's not going to stay on very easily. So what I want to do now is I want to go back to my torus, drag the torus, and drop it in the center. And I want to make that uh, well for the moment. Okay, so make this uh, make that one unit, but that's not where I want it to be. So let me highlight that torus again. Turn the tri ball on, and if we notice that the tor the tri ball is on the center of the torus, so I want to move that. <clears throat> I want to move that in. Oh. We'll grab this handle, move that 0.5, and turn my face in this direction. And I want to drag that out so it gives me a little bit of a groove. So now if I turn this around, so now I've made myself a little bit of a groove for a belt or a rope to fit into and it won't slip off so easily. Now let's put it in place. Highlight the part I want to move, turn the tri ball on, and let's double check to see where the tri ball is. The tri ball is on the back side. I'd like it to be in the center. So <clears throat> highlight the axis, drag it. Oops, I need to un unlock the tri ball. Drag it, move here, 0.5. So now I know the tri ball is in the center. So now I want to make that the center point right there. So now we know that it's it's on the center of where that hole is. So it's in the right position. Again, all without constraints. <clears throat> However, I need to make it and put it in the center. So let me highlight it, turn the tri ball on. Now, if I go into the little dot in the center, do a right click, I want to move that between a face and a point. So I want to pick this face. Well, let me lock this axis in before I do that. Otherwise, it'll move. So I want to lock that in uh, between a face and a point. Here's the face, and there's the point. Again, without, without knowing any kind of measurements, I'm able to put that exactly in position where I want it. But maybe I need to put some bolts in this thing. Let me go to my tools. A little closer so I can see it. Come over here. Touch on the edge so it can, it can pick up the, the half inch. Uh, this time, um, maybe I want it to be three inches. And for the heck of it, I'm going to push screws instead of bolts. And I want the, I want it to be a self-tapping, and I want it to be a little hex on that. I want it to be three inches, and we'll just say okay. And because they were both there, so now I've got two screws that go go through the part. But let's let's move them down a little bit. Highlight them both. Turn the tri balls on. And move them down. But you know, you you, you got a client, and, and maybe you want to make this a little bit fancier for the client, and you like it to maybe that wheel to turn. It's real simple. So I go to my animation catalog, and I find the 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 movement that I want to make. So I highlight the part, just drag and drop this to the center, and I don't, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this. And let me do this. Let me uh, hide unselected. Oh, maybe I didn't get it right. Let me go here. Here it goes. Now you see a little white rotational uh, icon. And let me turn everything else back on again. 
and just make sure yeah okay so I did I did get that wrong here let me click on that when I clicked on it the first time it put a uh, a, a, a rotation off someplace so I'm just going to delete that so now I've got a rotation and let's see how that works go, go to my visualization turn my animation on and play it so it rotates it's going a little bit faster than maybe I want to show so I go to my motion editor and let's make some more frames let's move that up to a hundred now play it again it moves a little slower again it's it's it, it, it it works the way I think in the sense that I want to make that rotate what do I do let me go get a rotation icon drop it on it and there it is the worst case excuse me scenario is you're picking the wrong direction but then you just delete it and you pick something else that's just a trial and error kind of a thing now what I've done here is I have made an assembly all in one file a lot of the other programs you can't do that you uh, if, if I'm going to send this to somebody I have to now send him all the individual parts so that so that they can so it reassembles itself when they open up the assembly file and, and you've been noticing let me turn that off that I've been using catalogs a lot well if all of a sudden you've created an assembly and you you want to keep those parts so I go to my common and I just I just that quick created an assembly a, a, a catalog so I highlight this part, left click, drag it and drop it, it's in my assembly. The same with the base, click on that, drag it and drop it, and the same with the axle. So I just built now parts that I could use, click on that, drag it out, there it is, click on this, drag it out, and click on the wheel and drag it out. So I've got, I've created a library using these parts. And it was just that easy. 